Hey guys, welcome back to SGN. And today we are continuing the RPG Maker 2003 tutorial series. Alright. Okay, anyway. <coughs> uh, before we get started, I have a new plan for my channel, and the plan is that there is no plan. I don't, I can't guarantee when I'm going to upload videos, but I will do it as often as I can because I got a lot of stuff going for me right now. And uh, yeah. <coughs> anyway, let's get into the tutorial. Anyway. Anyway, all right. Last time we had our tutorial series, we were mapping. Okay. <coughs> now today we're getting into the eventing section of our tutorial series. We're gonna get into the old eventing thing today. And something's very wrong with my resolution or something. <coughs> okay. Eventing. Let's start with some simple stuff. Alright, so, um, let's start with a simple event that tells you an item type or location type or something. We'll start with a mailbox. So, to get the event, you can either click and hit enter, I think. Yeah, enter. Or you could double click and make sure you are on the, uh, not one of these. You are on the eventing tab. Okay. <coughs> now, let's double click the mailbox. Let's name this Mailbox. Because, of course, why not? Don't give it anything. Leave it as pink. It'll look pink on the map if you see it right there. But in the actual game, it will not. That is basically transparency for this editor. Alright, so let's see. For the Mailbox, we don't want to... Okay, well, let me explain all this first. This is a lot to explain right now. Right here, we got switches. We're going to have two switches open at a time, which I will explain that in a minute. Along with variables, which I'll also explain. Item, hero, timer is kind of self explanatory, but I will get into explaining that. <coughs> Sorry about that. Okay, trigger condition. This is basically how the event will happen. With action key, it basically walk up there, hit the action button, which is usually spacebar, enter, and the event will occur while you're standing on top of or next to it while facing it. Okay, touched by hero. When you walk into the event, if you cause the event to collide, like if you walk right into it, you collide with the event, then it will activate. Or collision with hero if the event collides with you. So basically, like, they're kind of the same thing, but in the case, if there was like an event on the floor, like, let's, let's give an example. If I had this event right here, okay. If I had it on Touched by Hero, if I walked like this, right into the event, it would happen. Now if I walked right here and went to the right, no, it wouldn't happen. But if I did Collision with Hero, like that, you can also do that, but if this event runs into you while you're facing the other direction, it will also occur. So that is an example. <coughs> Alright, Auto Start, basically that will start when the map is loaded, so basically like, if, you, if I was, this is the first map, when I hit play game, if I had an auto start event, it would immediately happen. Nothing would have to trigger it. Parallel process, if you're in, if you're parallel to this event in some way, so pretty much standing on the map anywhere counts as parallel process, and it would be mainly for a day and night system, um, all kinds of things. <coughs> Alright, we're going to start with an action key. Event layer. Below hero, same layer as hero, or above hero. If it's below hero, that means, like, you can walk on top of it and it will happen. And if it's below you, whatever the picture is here, will stand underneath the hero. Same layer as hero, you won't be able to walk through it. And, uh, it'll basically be like another person standing there. Above hero, that basically is like birds and stuff, so you can walk under it. <coughs> and forbid event overlap. That is basically um mix it where you can't do two events at the same time, I think. Something like that. It's sorta of like you can't allow events to overlap each other as if you had a monster over here and a monster over here, they couldn't walk on top of each other. They couldn't overlap. But if you don't have that checked, I guess they could walk through each other. 
but for the mailbox, we're gonna do below here because the mailbox is already uh, a tile. If you do not want. So we need that. Actually, you know what? Same layers. So why not? Movement type stationary. Basically, it'll stand still. Random. It will move at random. As in, like it'd be like a civilian. They just change random direction, walk that way. Vertical. They will go vertically, like move back and forth vertically. Horizontal, they will move up and down horizontally. If that is up and down, I get my vertical and horizontal confused. Sorry about that, but they do that in a loop pretty much. Toward hero, it will approach you non-stop toward hero. Away from hero, it will run from you non-stop. Custom pattern, that allows you to find a speed and choose a But stationary for a mailbox. Movement frequency. This is how fast the vent will move. Like one eighth normal, it'll take really sputtering steps. One fourth normal, that half normal, normal, four times as normal, run really fast. Basically, how many frames it uses per se. Speed. How fast the event can move. Movement frequency. How many frames it uses and all that. Basically, like, if you have it going really fast, but you tell it to use a lot of frames, it'll move even faster. But if you have it on the max speed but low frames it'll still take some time. So you can mess with that as you want, but I'm going to leave it in normal because it's a mailbox. <coughs> okay. Now let's uh, get into switches. Switch. You know what? This isn't a good event for that. We'll do that in a minute. For a mailbox, let's, you can double click to start a command, and you got all your commands here, which I'm not going to get into every single one of them. They're kind of self-explanatory, and there's a lot to do. So I'm not going to go over that, but if anyone has a question about any of these, you can send me a message. Tweet me, leave a comment, whatever, and I'd be glad to help you with most of these events. I know how you. I'm not too familiar with some of these because I don't use this program anymore, and I didn't use it for the longest time. When I first started using RPG 2003, I wasn't really into this kind of stuff at the time, and so I didn't learn too much about it. But I do know a lot about it from my other experiences with other computers, and I came back to it, and I could do a lot more. Okay, so anyway, back to the tutorial. Let's make a message. Or you can do message display options to make it to where it'll show your message differently. Well, I'll show you an example of that. Let's start with a message though. Um, like normal games, like if you've played any RPG or something, you walk up to a mail mailbox, it usually tells you <coughs> whose house it is. So let's start with that. Um, we'll name our player player. I don't even know what his name is. Do we give him a name? I don't know. Player's house. Okay. Now, apply. Okay. Let's play test. Yes, we would like to see it now. Excuse the lag if it does. I'm recording this in HD because I like recording all my videos in HD now. If you have not noticed. Because it is very nice. Very nice quality. Okay. So let's see how this turns out. <coughs> Alright. Not too bad. So uh, let's let's check our mailbox. Player's house. Just a normal event window. Player's house. Player's house. Okay. Let's do some message display options to show you what all you can make your message do. Now with this, window type normal or transparent. Normal would be that blue box that appears behind it. Transparent, it would just appear, which is probably better for this kind of situation. Position on the top, middle, or bottom. If it's on bottom four, middle, it'll appear in the middle screen or top, it'll go at the very top. Let's place this in the middle. <coughs> Auto select window position to prevent hero from being obscured, which would basically mean if you have a normal window or transparent window even. If your hero is standing towards the bottom of the screen or at the bottom of the map, it will naturally put the box above him to where it won't block out the hero. But if you have that unselected, it won't matter. I'm going to unselect that because I don't really care about that. Allow other events to continue while the message is shown. Basically, if you have civilians walking around, normally when you uh, start the message, they would all freeze. The game would basically pause. But if you have that going, it won't pause. So basically, if you have enemies and you have like an ABS system going on here, if you could figure one out, which I could not for this, um, then you can basically make it where you can still be attacked while reading a message. So, yeah. That is our message display options. Let's take another peek at that real quick. See how our message looks now. Okay. 
play it fast. Play it fast. Simple enough. Alright. Let's do another event. Another simple event right now. Um, let's throw another event in right here and see if we can. Sign. What all we got here? Okay. So let's make it to where it'll say this. And if you go up, it will reach player count. And if you go that way, you will reach the armor. Simple enough. And so I'm not sure before. So that is where I'm actually going to go. Oh, it's saying the jump. Nice and flat. Oh, yeah. Usually, I don't know how this works. But I do know what other things like to do. You always want to reset your settings after you change windows play options. So they will stay like that for the whole game until they are changed again. So you always want to go back and do that. Sorry I didn't say that right away, but just a little heads up. I always want to change them back at the end of the event. Or the end of the phrase. Alright, and uh, let's see. Where would be a good area to have a switch? How about this? We're going to make a person here. We're going to name this guy Random Guy. Simple enough. Okay, let's set his graphic to look like... A hard decision. Let's make a king. And let's make him a uh, custom pattern. Speed. Four. That's half the speed of him. Or the highest. Uh, frequency, four. Frequency that basically says like I guess frequency of how the event moves, like how often it would move, for instance. So it's sort of like speed, I guess. I think it actually is speed maybe. Yeah, it's speed. That is speed. So there was no need to explain that. <coughs> like I said, I'm kinda shabby with the whole RP maker thing again since I'm just trying to get back into this. Alright, so repeat pattern. If you have that checked or unchecked. If you have it checked, you will That will basically, if you have a move in there that cannot be done, sorry about that, like, if you have a move in there that cannot be done, like, you can only go right five times, but there's only four blocks, it'll ignore that move and continue moving. If you don't have that checked, you'll get an error, usually. But, so, most of the time, you want to ignore impossible moves, just because you don't want errors. And we're going to make him face random direction, which is basically make him look around, make him look as if he's looking for somebody, it makes you want to go talk to him, of course. And since we put a person there, it will automatically change to the same layer as hero and all that. And we want a continuous animation type. Oh, I didn't explain this yet. Non-continuous. Basically, he will not do anything. He'll just stand there. If you have a continuous animation type, that's sort of like the whole Final Fantasy thing. He walks in place. And it's sort of the Final Fantasy thing going. Not uh, fixed non-continuous, I'm not too sure what these do, I think that's sort of like scripted version of them in a way, I can't really explain these two as well, so you might want to check another tutorial on that or ask somebody else, because I'm not sure yet. Fixed graphic, you can uh, make a fixed graphic, you'll see, so basically if you have him set like that and you talk to him, he won't turn to look at you, he'll stay like that. And spin around, of course just saying they're spinning around like a crazy guy, we want non-continuous because he's going to be looking in random direction so I look in weird. Make it to where we talk to him. And he will be like, random, no, random guy, because of course we will RPG talk here, so I'm random guy. Dirk guy. Dirk guy. Dirk guy. Uh, Dirk How about that? Dirk 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 And after you talk to him, we will then make a switch. Now, single switch, switch range, variable reference. Single switch. This will basically be your base switch, which is what we're going to work with right now. Um, so let's make this the dirt switch. Now, if you do switch range, that can make a uh, switch from all these. So if you talk to him, you can make it to where if you have like. You can have as many switches as you want, as long as you don't reach the limit. Let's say I made it to where I want switches 7 through 
10 to turn on when I talk to you. Then you do switch range 7 through 10, or 1 through 2, whatever. Or turn off, or toggle on or off. What that does, uh, basically, if it's on, it'll toggle off. If it's off, it'll toggle on. So that's, that's a pretty good thing to always check, because then it will know what to do, usually. But uh, if you only want the event to turn on, then you should know. That's good for certain situations. It just depends on the situation, like a light on or light off. Variable reference, this will refer then to a variable, depending on what the variable is. So, yeah, you don't use that too often, but you can use that. So let's make the Dirk switch turn on. When Dirk switch is on, let's make a new page. With switch, turn on, switch to Dirk. We will make this guy change to a key. And do the same thing. And wait, let's... Let's copy. Let's copy this message. Paste it here. Copy this. Paste it here. Edit. Turn off. This would be a good time to do toggle on or off, actually. Because you see, it will do the thing that it's not even needing. So we can actually do toggle on or off for this situation. And there we go. Now let's test that out. See how well this works. Onto our map. He's saying there's looking around at random. See? Turn around. Okay. Let's talk to him. Random guy. Durga, 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 Durga. He has to go and start spinning around. Like one. Durga, 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 Durga. Back to that guy. It can just go on and on and will never break loose. Well, you can do whatever. And that is how that works. Simple enough. So, um, yes, that is pretty much eventing basics. There will probably be a second part to this, which I'll make at a later date, uh, explaining even more events, but this video is already up to 20 minutes almost. And if anybody has an event they would like to request, I would gladly throw it in, or if there's a whole eventing section you need certain events on, give me a list of them. I could make a special episode called Eventing Help or something, and I'll make multiple of those depending on how many I need that will go through each event or if you guys want that you can request it I'll just do a whole series where I just go through each event anyway just because I can't it's all up to you guys and uh, yeah so like I said thanks for watching thanks for watching SGN if you like SGN or me CK101 most of SGN which I call some kids gaming network if you don't know that already uh, please subscribe if you like my videos or if you like me or if you just like the SGN thing which I don't know what that is but if you like it there you go. Uh, leave a comment if you have any questions or anything like that. You can also send me an email, which should be in my profile for any situation regarding to this or anything else. You can message me on Steam or join the SGN group, which I would love you to join the SGN group. And you can talk to me through Steam. Or you could also just tweet me with my Twitter, which is also has a link in my channel, which you can go check and tweet me anytime. I don't check that as often, so if you tweet me, don't expect to... Like, a response or anything right away but you can tweet me and I'll I'll take a look at that occasionally and all that good stuff and uh like the video if you like the thumbs up or if you just hate me and don't like me at all thumbs down because I really don't care no, I'm just but yeah give me a thumbs up please really nice really nice of you but like I said thumbs down it's your choice but, and uh yeah thanks for watching sorry for the delayed RPG Maker 2003 tutorials but these things are kind of strenuous on my brain not really but I just the game making things not my style too much anymore, but I'm still doing it for you guys. And uh, thanks for supporting my videos as much as you guys do. I'm getting new subscribers almost every day, and I'm liking each one of you, and I know this is one of my popular series. I'm sorry I don't do it enough, but uh, yeah, thanks for all the views you give me on these specific videos, because it is nice to know that my tutorials are helpful to others, and I do enjoy doing them when I have the time to, so thank you all. And I hope you learned something from these videos and enjoy your game making. If you do something great, you wanna you gotta send me a link to your game. So if you if you do something, I want I want a link to this game. I want to play your game. All right. And uh, thanks for watching. Keep your eyes peeled for the next episode where it will be the second part to be minting. We get into some more elaborate eventing than what we did today. And then uh, we'll see what comes down the road after that in our next time to make a tutorial series. Thanks for watching. SGN off.